Warrior Cats Into the Wild by Aaron Hunter Chapter 1 It was very dark. Rusty could sense something was near. The young Tom Cat's eyes opened wide as he scanned the dense undergrowth. This place was unfamiliar, but the strange sense drew him onward, deeper into the shadows. His stomach growled, reminding him of his hunger. He opened his jaws slightly to let the warm smells of the forest reach the scent glands on the roof of his mouth. Musty odors of leaf mold mingled with the tempting aroma of a small furry creature. Suddenly, a flash of gray raced past him. Rusty stops, stopped, still listening. It was hiding in the leaves, less than two tail lengths away. Rusty knew it was a mouse. He could feel the rapid pulsing of a tiny heart deep within his ear fur. He swallowed, stifling his rumbling stomach. Soon his hunger would be satisfied. Slowly, he lowered his body into position, crouching for the attack. He was downwind of the mouse. He knew it was not aware of him. With one final check on his prey's position, Rusty pushed back hard on his haunches and sprang, kicking up leaves on the forest floor as he rose. The mouse dived for cover, heading toward a hole in the ground. Rusty was already on top of it. He scooped it up, scooped it into the air, hooking the helpless creature with his thorn-sharp thorn sharp claws, flicking it up in a high arch onto the leaf-covered ground. The mouse lay dazed but alive. It tried to run, but Rusty snatched it up again. He tossed the mouse once more. This time, a little farther away, the mouse managed to scramble a few paces before Rusty caught up with it. Suddenly, a noise roared nearby. Rusty looked around and around, and as he did so, the mouse was able to pull away from his claws. When Rusty turned back, he saw it dart into the darkness among the tangled roots of a tree. Angry, Rusty gave up the hunt. He spun around, his green eyes glaring intent on searching out the noise that had cost him his kill. The sound rattled on, becoming more familiar. Rusty blinked open his eyes. The forest had disappeared. He was inside a hot and airless kitchen, curled in his bed. Moonlight f filtered through the window, casting shadows on the smooth, hard floor. The noise had been the rattle of hard, dried pellets of food as they were tipped into his dish. dish. Rusty had been dreaming. Lifting his head, he rested his chin on the side of his bed, his collar rubbed uncomfortably around his neck. In his dream, he had felt fresh air ruffling the soft fur where the collar usually pinched. <clears throat> Rusty rolled onto his back, savoring the dream for a few more moments. He could still smell it, sp smell mouse. It was the third time since full moon that he had the dream and every time the mouse had escaped his grasp, he licked his lips from his bed. He could smell the bland odor of his food. His owners always refilled his dish before they went to bed. The dusty smells chased away the warm sense of his dream. But the hunger rumbled on in his stomach. So Rusty stretched the sleep out, sleep out of his limbs and padded across the kitchen floor to his dinner. The food felt dry and tasteless on his tongue. Rusty reluctantly swallowed one more mouthful then he turned away from the food dish and pushed his way out through the cat flap hoping that the smell of the garden would bring back the feelings from his dream outside the moon was bright it was raining lightly rusty stalked down the tidy garden following the starlit gravel path feeling the stones cold and sharp beneath his paws he made his dirt he made his dirt beneath a large bush with glossy green leaves and heavy purple flowers. Their sickly scent, sweet scent, cl clothed the damp air around him, as he and he curled his lips to drive the smell out of his nostrils. Afterward, Rusty settled down on top of one of the posts in the fence that m marked the limits of his garden. It was a favorite spot of his, as he could see right into the neighboring gardens as gardens as well as into the dense green forest on the other side of the garden fence. The rain had stopped behind him. The closed cropped lawn was bathed in moonlight. 
but beyond his fence the woods were full of shadows. Rusty stretched his head forward to take a sniff of the damp air. His skin was warm and dry under his thick coat, but he could feel the weight of the raindrops that sparkled on his ginger fur. He heard his owners giving him one last call from the back door. He, If he went to them now, they would greet him with gentle words and caress and welcome him in, onto their bed, where he would curl, purring warm in the crook of a bent knee. But this time, Rusty ignored his owner's voices and turned his gaze back to the forest. The crisp smell of the woods had grown fresher after the rain. Suddenly, the fur on his spine prickled. Was something moving out there? Was something watching him? Rusty stared ahead, but it was impossible to see or, see or smell anything. In the dark tree-scented air, he lifted his chin boldly, stood up, stood up and stretched one paw, gripping each corner of the fence post. As he straightened his legs and arched his back, he closed his eyes and breathed in the smell of the woods once more. It seemed to promise him something, tempting him onward into the whispering shadows. Tensing his muscles, he crouched for a moment. Then he leaped lightly down into the rough grass on the si other side of the f garden fence. As he landed, the bell on his collar rang out through the still night air. Where are you off to, Rusty? meowed a f familiar voice behind him. Rusty looked up. A young black and white cat was balancing ungracefully on the fence. Hello, Smudge, Rusty replied. You're not going into the woods, are you? Smudge Am Amber's amber eyes were huge. Just for a look, Rusty promised, shifting uncomfortably. You want to get me in there. It's dangerous, Smug wrinkled his black nose with distance, distaste. Henry said he went into the woods at once. The cat lifted his head and gestured with his nose over the rows of fences toward the garden where, Rus where Henry lived. That fat old tabby never went into the woods, Rusty scoffed. He's hardly been beyond his own garden since he his trip to the vet. All he ever wants to do is eat and sleep. No, really, he caught a robin there, Smudge insisted. Well, if he did, then it was before he the vet. Now he complains about birds just being about birds because they disturb his dozing. Well, anyway, Fudge went on, ignoring the scorn in Rusty's mew, m meow. Henry told me there are all sorts of dangerous animals out there. Huge wildcats who eat live rabbits for breakfast and sharpen their claws on old bones. I'm only going for a look around, Rusty meowed. I won't stay long. Well, don't say I didn't warn you, purred Smudge. The black and white cat turned and plunged off the fence back down into his own garden. Rusty sat down in the coarse grass beyond the garden fence. He gave his shoulder a nervous lick and wondered how much of Smudge gossip was true. Suddenly, the movement of a tiny creature caught his eye. He watched it scuttle under some branches. In instinct, uh, instinct made him drop into a low crouch with one, with one slow paw after another. He drew his body forward through the undergrowth. Ears pricked, nostrils, nostrils flared, eyes unblinking. He m moved toward the animal. He could see it clearly now, sitting up among the barbed branches nibbling on a large seed held between its paws. It was a mouse. Rusty rocked his haunches from side to side, preparing to leap. He held his breath in case his bell rang again. Excitement coursed. Excitement coursed through him, making his heart pound. This was even better than, it, than his dreams. Then a sudden noise of cracking twigs and crunching leaves made him jump. His bell jingled, jingled, treacherously, and the mouse darted away into the thickest tangle of the bramble bush. Rusty stood very still and looked around. He could see the white tip of a red bushy tail trailing through a clump of tall ferns up ahead. He smelled a strong, strange scent. Definitely a meat eater, but neither cat nor dog. Distracted, Rusty forgot about the mouse and watched the red tail curiously. He wanted a better look. All of Rusty's scents strained ahead as he prowled forward. Then he detected another noise. It came from behind, but sounded muted and distant. He sw swiveled his ears backward to hear it better. Paw steps? He wondered, but he kept his eyes fixed on the strange red fur up ahead and continued to creep forward. It was only when the faint rust 
Rustling behind him became a loud and fast approaching leaf crackle that Rusty realized he was in danger. I'm going to end it here because I'm running out of time. I'll read the next, I'll read the rest of the chapter soon. Hope you guys enjoy. Bye.